It is true. The stories you heard are true. The rumors are confirmed. Dre all day is live again. As I told you, live from Work On Your Game University. I gotta give a minute for everybody to come in here. I'm talking, nobody's in here to hear me yet. But if you're watching this on replay, you're hearing me. So shout out to everybody watching on replay. Pinning my comments so y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what the topic is. Y'all know what we're getting into here today. If you was here yesterday, you already know what it is. If you weren't here yesterday, uh, apologize to yourself for missing it. But make sure you catch the replay. And actually, I'm gonna tell you how you can catch this whole thing in a minute. Miss Bougie Badass, what's good? First comment, congratulations to you. So as y'all come in, tell me your names and locations. We getting started in less than two minutes, not even that long, less than 90 seconds, maybe less than 60 seconds. So as y'all come in, tell me your name and location in the comment section. We are gonna get into the proceedings this evening. You already know what the topic is. If you were here yesterday, you already know what it was. And if you weren't here yesterday, again, you know, you owe an apology to yourself. Don't apologize to me. I apologize to you. If you're, if you're coming in right now, name and location, name and location. Facebook, what's going on? Y'all don't know me, you will in a minute. I'm going to tell everybody what it is. Ms. Bougie said from the DMV area. Shout out to the DMV area. Shout out to PG County. Shout out to Baltimore. Shout out to D.C. Ab D. Shakur from Vancouver. Shout out to Vancouver. Athens is in the house. Shout out to Athens. Is that Athens, Georgia or Athens, Greece? Shout out to both of those. Shout out to both Athens that I know of. As y'all coming in, name and locations, everybody. This is Dre all day. Y'all know who I am. Tell me who you are. We got a coon checking in from Calgary. So we are already international. Everybody can see that. Everybody can hear that. We getting started in 30 seconds. I'm going to introduce myself to the audience. Then we getting right into the material because as I said, you already know, Athens, Greece. Shout out to Athens, Greece. So we already international, as y'all can see. We got Greece in the house, we got Canada. Of course, we got the United States. And everybody in here is at Work On Your Game. Yeah, everyone here is at Work On Your Game University. And the topic here tonight, and anybody who will have a question or comment, anything I say tonight, I will address all questions and comments at the end of the stream. The topic tonight is part two of two of what we started yesterday. First, let me introduce me. My name is Drake Baldwin, for those who don't know me, former nine-year professional basketball player, author of 25 books, creator of over 7,000 YouTube videos, writer of 7,000 articles, publisher of over 1,500 podcast episodes, which I call Masterclass because mine is not just a regular podcast. I've done four TED Talks. I'm a coach, consultant, keynote speaker, trainer, teacher, all of the above. I created this whole framework and this whole philosophy called Work On Your Game. It's all about taking the mindset necessary to be in the top 1% of what you do, as I did in the sports world, and teaching how you can apply that in the business world, how you can apply that in business, how you can apply it in your everyday life, and how you can apply it to anything you do. You do not have to play sports to get value from what I talk about. You probably already know that. And today's topic, we are in part two of two from yesterday's live. Yesterday's live, the topic was, you are gonna need more than hard work to be successful. And I did the first four points. There are eight ingredients. I'm gonna give y'all just a little bit of background on this for those who missed it yesterday and those who might not remember from yesterday. Whenever people uh, become highly successful at what they do or they become publicly noted for their success or they start to get recognized for their success, people will ask them, well, you know, what was the key to your success? How did you do it? And usually when people get asked how they became successful, they'll say something like, I worked really hard. Really hard work is the reason I became successful. All of my effort and the time that I put into the game and just grinding and working hard and team no sleep and believing in myself and all that as if hard work is the key to success. Now, while hard work is an important aspect of success, hard work is not the key to success because a lot of people work hard. Not everybody who works hard becomes successful. Not everyone who works hard wins. So you're going to need more than hard work if you're going to be successful in anything that you do in life. And what I'm talking about here today and what I was talking about yesterday, and I'm going to tell you where you can get access to all of this masterclass all in one at the end of this today, is... You need some elements other than hard work to be successful in life. It's like hard work is like the oven and success is like baking a cake. And if you have an oven and you have a desire to bake a cake, that's not going to produce a cake. You turn your oven on right now to 500 degrees and leave it on overnight. No cake is going to pop out when you wake up in the morning because you haven't put any ingredients into the oven. Just because you turn the oven on doesn't mean you want to produce a result. Just because you work hard does not mean you're going to become successful. You got to put some good things in with 
the hard work to create success. In other words, you gotta have the recipe. You gotta know what ingredients to mix together in the mixing bowl and then put it in the batter and then put it in the baking pan. And then you gotta know what temperature to put the oven on. That means how hard to work, how long you gotta do that work, where you gotta do the work in order for the cake to come out. And if you overwork it, you put too much work in, but you put the cake in the oven for too long, you burn the cake. You don't leave the cake in long enough, the cake doesn't taste right. So you gotta make sure you got the right recipe for how you're gonna use your hard work and combine it with these elements that I'm talking about yesterday and today. So yesterday I told you about the first four elements, which are choosing wisely, luck, timing, and vision. Today, I'm giving you the second of this group of eight elements, eight elements that you need to combine with hard work in order to create your success. Hard work ain't enough, okay? You need much more than hard work to be successful in life. So any motivator, or you know, hype up artist or influencer or guru who told you that if you just work hard, you're gonna become successful, that's garbage. They either don't know what they're talking about or they're misleading you. For the most part, they're not misleading you. They just don't know what they're talking about. They don't know how to explain things. It's just, it's just because somebody can do something doesn't mean they can explain it. I happen to be, not to toot my own horn, but I happen to be the rare breed of individual who would both do it and I can explain it to other people how you can do it. And that's why I'm here on this live, giving you all this value. So make sure you are soaking up game and you are uh, doing everything you need to do to remember and retain and implement everything I'm going to talk about here today. And someone said, isn't no hard work is not the key to success. The key to success, hard work is an element of success. Just like you need an oven to bake a cake. Again, if you just have an oven and you want a cake, will it produce a cake? No, you got to have the element. You got to have the ingredients. You got to mix them together in the right amounts. And you got to know how long to put it in the oven in order to get a cake. If you mess up any one of those steps, you do not get a cake or at least not a cake that you want to eat. So now point number five, that's what we starting off point number five. You missed yesterday's live, you missed it. I'm gonna tell you where to get the whole thing when I'm done with this. Number five element, number five ingredient that you need to put into your mixing bowl to create success is called persistence. Persistence. And persistence is not the same as hard work, okay? This is different. I'm gonna tell y'all, I've, I've been giving y'all these little anecdotes about me along the way as I'm telling y'all these, these points. So here's another one from me. When I went to my first exposure camp, uh, I was trying to play ball. I came out of a D3 school where I walked on. I'm trying to play ball overseas. I don't know much about how to play. I don't know anybody who's played. I don't have any real information. So I went to my first exposure camp, drove from Philadelphia to Orlando overnight. I left on a Friday, the camp started Saturday morning. We drove straight, no sleep, get out the car, jump in the gym and go play ball two days straight. This is in Orlando. So I played good at this exposure camp, right? And they gave me the footage from the camp. And back then, this is not today, usually you go to an exposure camp, you get the video, that's like part of the package. But back then, when you went to a camp, if you wanted the footage, you had to pay extra just to get the film from the games, because that's how it was back then. This is before we all had smartphones, you could film everything on your phone. This is when you got a VHS tape of your game. So I played really good at this exposure camp. So I paid the extra 20 bucks to get the footage of my games. I played two games on Saturday, two on Sunday. So it's four games on this VHS tape. They sent me that tape. Now I'm really happy that I got this tape because I knew I played good at the, t at the camp. And this is finally, now I got some proof of me playing basketball really well against high level players. Because mind you, I'm at a camp, I'm playing against other players who are professional level guys and the audience was all managers, scouts, agents, etc. So I'm feeling myself over going to this camp. I'm in good shape. But now I still need to get a job. Just because I went to the exposure camp doesn't mean you get a job just because. So I took that VHS tape now that I got that in hand, I had a scouting report from the camp. I started reaching out to agents. I started reaching out to every agent that I heard of, every agent I could find. I just Googling basketball agents, just finding people, emailing them, calling them, and letting them know, like, yo, here's who I am. Here's what I've done. Here's my resume. Look, I went to this exposure camp. Here's my scouting report from the camp. And this scouting report was making me look good. And, and I tell them, look, and I got footage from my camp. Now, all those agents, I, I reached out to like 50 agents. Out of those 50, like 20 of them was like, all right, let me see what you got. Let me see your footage and you know, see if I can represent you, if I can help you, if I can work with you, if I want to sign you, whatever, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. Because I'm looking at agents as the go, they're the middleman. They got connections to the teams overseas that I want to play for. I don't have connections to the teams. So if I get with an agent, I can use the agent's connections and get myself a deal. So that was my whole plan, right? So out of those 20 agents who were interested in seeing me, I had to send them my footage. Now, mind you, this is 2005. This is not YouTube. Our YouTube wasn't even YouTube yet, so it wasn't no YouTube link. I had to actually, I had a double-decker VCR in my house. You don't know what a VCR is. It's a thing that plays VHS tapes. 
And I went to Eckerd, the drugstore, and I bought like a 10 pack of blank VHS tapes. And I actually made a copy. I made copies on each one of those blank VHS tapes. I bought two 10 packs, so I had 20 of them. I made a copy of each one of those 20 VHS tapes of the main tape from that exposure camp. So now I got 20 copies of my footage. And I put that thing in a bubble mailer envelope, took it to the US Postal Service, and mailed those things out all over the world to all these different agents who wanted to see my game. That's how you had to send your game film back in the day. Uh, you couldn't just send a YouTube link or yo, check out my Instagram. It wasn't like that. You had to actually make copies of your video and put it in a physical mailbox or take it to the post office and you had to pay for that. So out of my own pocket, I paid for those tapes, I paid for the mailing envelopes, and I paid for the posters just for the hope that one agent would sign me. I only need one agent to sign me. You can't sign with two agents. So actually you kind of could, but that's a different story. One agent out of those 20 was interested in me and that agent decided to represent me. He was based in Virginia. He's not an agent anymore. So don't ask me, do I got any agent connections? And he got me my first deal playing in Lithuania in 2005. That's how I got my first deal. It was my persistence and it wasn't, even though I played good at the camp and there was a good scouting report out there about me, that didn't mean anything was gonna happen. It's not like a bag of money and a whole bunch of contracts just fall out of the sky just because you play good in the exposure camp. You still gotta take the next step and the next step and the next step. It's kind of like if you're a model and you do a photo shoot and you think the photos are hot, that's cool, but you still gotta get the photo, you still gotta show those photos to somebody who can do something for your career. Just because you got some nice photos or you think you're looking in the mirror today and you think you look good, that don't mean you can get a modeling job. Like you still gotta do the job of marketing and promoting yourself, right? So that's the next step that I took that a lot of people don't take in whatever they do in life. That got me my first deal. Now, here's what happened after that. Wait, years later, I played in a couple places and I found myself unemployed again. I didn't have a job playing ball and I wanted to get another job. And I was like, man, I don't know. I had tried to reach out to agents. That wasn't really, really working. I wasn't really getting no response. I had been to an exposure camp. I think that previous summer, nothing had really popped from the exposure camp. And I'm like, man, what am I supposed to do now out of this situation? So I decided that I was gonna reach out to some teams directly. I knew how, some ways to reach out to some teams directly, which usually doesn't do anything. And it could be a huge waste of time. But I said, all right, this is the only option I got left. So I just said, I'm gonna just forget it, I'm gonna do it. So I started reaching out to all these teams, professional teams overseas. Again, this is way back over 10 years ago. So don't think you should go do this today. It probably ain't gonna work. But I did it for like four months straight. Every day I was getting up, sending emails to teams, agents, scouts, whoever I could find just to get a connection, just to get a live prospect of somebody who might be interested in getting me a deal because I needed to get back in the game. I could not be out of a pro basketball game any longer. Four straight months, I was sending emails every day. At this time, I was working at LA Fitness. I was actually like the last you know, regular job that I ever worked. Working at LA Fitness, and after four months, I finally found a team that was interested in me. I sent over, and I wrote about it in this book right here. I wrote about this story. I sent over 10,000 emails over the course of four months. So you do the math on how many emails that is per day. And this wasn't no copy and paste. This was personalized emails, changing up things. There's not 10,000 basketball teams in the world. I was sending emails to the same teams more than once, just trying different methods, trying to get a response. And I did that for four straight months and that's how I got myself back in the game, playing ball overseas. And I didn't have to look back from that point forward. Now I'm telling you all that to tell you this. When you believe in your vision, like I talked about in the fourth principle yesterday, which was vision. When you truly believe in your vision, you will be willing to persist on doing what you gotta do to make it happen. But the thing about persistence, I want y'all to be really clear on this. Just because you persist on something does not mean it's gonna automatically produce results. You gotta persist on something that is a wise decision based on your judgment and thinking, what's a wise decision that I should persist in? What's something that I should really give energy to? What's going on Rob over there on Facebook? What's something that I should give my energy to? What's something that I should persist in? Where do I have the right ingredients that if I persist, I can see myself creating a positive outcome in this space? And it can't be based on your just your emotion Oh, I just think I can do this just because you think that's the cool thing to do or you think other people think you should do it. It got to be based on some logical thought of what you truly are capable of doing. Because a lot of people you know, trick themselves. They fool themselves into believing that this thing is supposed to be their destiny. Like, you know, when basketball players are 14, everybody thinks their destiny is the NBA. All right, but by the time they're 24, maybe one of them has become the NBA player out of 100,000. Everybody isn't supposed to be doing the same thing. 
You got to choose wisely about what to persist in. You got to master the art of timing so that you know when is the right time to make moves and you got to have the right vision. Because if your vision is off, you might persist on something and, and it end up being a complete waste of time. So where are you going to persist? And the key is, again, choice. You make the wrong choice and you persist in something, you use up a lot of your energy, a lot of time, maybe a lot of your money, and the opportunity cost. The whole time you spend persisting on this angle, if it ends up being the wrong thing, now you're behind the eight ball. You're way behind everybody who was going this way when you finally decide to come over here. So you got to be really smart about where you persist. That's principle number five or element number five is persistence. Element number six. Number six is people. Now, here's the thing about people or in relationships. Whenever someone makes the right connections and those connections help them get opportunities or helps you do business or helps you get to a, a higher level or helps you go further in whatever you're doing, you ask somebody how they do it, what do they say? They say, you know, I've been networking. I've been making connections. I got all these relationships. I know this person. I know that person. That's what people say when everything's working, right? When you got the right, when you know the right people and the right people know you, you say networking, right? That's how I know all these people. I've been networking and making connections. But when you don't know the right people, let's say you get passed over for an opportunity, somebody makes a phone call and instead of making a call on your behalf, they make a call on the behalf of your competitor. Or if somebody knows the person in charge, but you don't know them, so that person gets advanced and you don't, they get the promotion and you get left behind, what do you say? You call that politics. See, thing is, when we know the right people and relationships work in our favor, we call it networking. And when we don't know the right people and relationships, our lack of relationships work against us, we call it politics. But they're two sides of the exact same coin, and that coin is people. That coin is relationships. That coin is who you know. Some of you may have heard the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's actually both. It's what you know and it's who you know. But what you know matters a whole lot. And if you don't know the right people or you know them but you don't have the right relationship, people will work against you. Your, that, those politics, what you call politics, will start working against you simply because you don't know the right people and you ain't got the right relationships. When I was trying to learn how to get into this whole thought leadership area, like professional speaking and you know, getting my books out into the world. I already have written books, but getting my books more out into the world and establishing myself as an expert in the outside of the basketball world. People knew me in the basketball world, but I wasn't known as like a speaker. I hadn't done any TED Talks. I wasn't known for my writing like that. I needed to get established in that space, but I didn't know how to do it. I was looking for somebody who knew how to do it so I could find out, you know, how, what do I need to do? What steps do I need to take? I'll do the work, but I need to know what to do. So I went to this meeting, I went to this Toastmasters meeting, this was like six years ago. And I gave this speech, first speech I gave at the meeting, I was introducing myself, telling them who I was, I used to play ball, now I'm, I'm out of ball, and I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get into this thought leadership world and speaking and all that, but I don't know what to do, but I'm gonna just keep working until I figure out what it is. That's what I said in my speech. And after the speech, this dude came up to me, uh, he was a former NFL player, his name was Philip Buchanan, he used to play at University of Miami. And he was an all-pro in the NFL. He played for like the Raiders, I think, Miami, Tampa Bay. I know he played for the Raiders. I can't remember who else he played for. But anyway, Philip came up to me. He was like, yo, I didn't, know he, I didn't know who he was. Because football players, you know, you can't see their face all the time. So I didn't know who he was. But he was like, yeah, I used to play, you know, football. And I'm trying to get into speaking too. So we was both kind of in the same lane. And he said, I'm about to go to this conference where everybody learns about being a speaker. So I was like, all right, oh, that's what's up. And he was telling me I should go. And it was uh, out of town, it was in San Diego. And I told him, well, I got a prior engagement. So I had a different event I was going to that same day, the same weekend. He was like, all right, cool, well, anybody I meet there, I'm gonna throw you their information and you can call them and you can you know, connect, you can network with those same people on your own. I said, all right, cool. So he went to the conference, whatever. He came back, he gave me one phone number. He gave me a name and a phone number. He texted to me, but he didn't give me no context. He didn't say who they were, nothing. He just said, here's, here's the name and phone number. So I called the number. And that person ended up being, her name was Dawn, and she ended up being my mentor. And I talked about her in my book, Chapter 12, in this book right here. I talked about uh, my relationship with Dawn and how she helped me put myself on. Notice, I didn't say she put me on. She helped me put myself on. That's Chapter 12 in here when I talk about mentors. That's this whole story of how I connected with Dawn. And the reason I'm telling you that, how I made that connection, is to tell you this. Had I not gone and taken initiative and done something for myself, and started taking actions to do things, then I never would have made that connection to Phil. He would never would have connected me to Donna. And here's the other thing. When I met Donna, and I said to her one day, I said, yo, why would you 
you know, give me all this information. Why are you taking this time and you know, taking a liking to what I'm doing and making sure I'm doing the right things and answering my questions? Why even do this? You don't really know me like that. You didn't even know the dude who connected us like that. You only met him one time. Why are you even doing this? And she said, well, look, here's the thing. She said, Dre, I've been a speaker for all this time and everybody around here knows me as a speaker. They know me as somebody who knows my stuff. They know me as somebody that if they're messing up or they don't know what they're doing, they can come to me and I can look at what they're doing. I can fix it really quick. She was an expert at what she did. But she said, I didn't sat down and because we sit in the Starbucks. She was like, I didn't sat in that Starbucks with like 20 different people and none of them did anything with the information I gave them. I gave them all this information and they were all telling me how great it was. And you know what they did with it? Nothing. So I said, okay, so why did you sit down with me? If people keep wasting your time and not using your information, why'd you sit down with me? And she said, the reason I sat down with you, Dre, is because when you told me who you were, and I remember I called her and she was asking me, she was on her computer when I called her because I could hear her typing on her keyboard. She was like, well, what's your name? I told her my name. She Googled me. She's like, you got a website? And I said, yeah, I got a website and I've done this. I started telling her about the stuff that I do. Like I wrote these books and I used to play ball and I had these YouTube videos and all that. And she said, the reason I sat down with you is because one thing you said, you said, I put out a video every day. That's the reason why she sat down with me. And here's the, and here's the reason why that mattered. It's not because she was a basketball fan or a basketball player. And it wasn't because she was about to subscribe to me on YouTube. The reason why that mattered to her is because she said, when you told me you put out a video every day, that told me that you're the type of individual who follows through on your work. You're the type of person who decides you want to do something and you actually stick to it and you actually do it and not just talk about it. That's the reason why I sat down with you because I knew that if I told you something, you would probably follow through the same way you follow through on your own, the same way you follow through on your own uh, career and in your own life. And that, I'm telling you that to tell you this. The reason why she, as an expert, she was already in the game. She was already charging five figures for her speaking gig. She was already known. She was already established in the world. She didn't need anything from me. The only reason she sat down with me is because I already had some collateral that I brought to the table. Y'all understand? This is the part I want y'all to get. When you go and meet with somebody who you don't know and they got more status than you, they're higher up on the food chain than you and you don't really have anything you can offer that person, you got to have something that you've done or something that you're about or something that makes you I guess what y'all like to say relevant in the world that would make somebody else want to give you their time. Because if I didn't, I told her, look, I wrote four, I had four books at the time. I got 25 now. At the time I had four. I was like, I've written four books. I got a website right here. I got these, this YouTube channel right here. I got this much, this many people in my audience. I got this going on. I'm doing this, these things. And because I had this collateral already, I already had a track record of, of work that I'd done. I had a body of work because I had that body of work. I got a person who already had way higher status than me who was willing to sit down and talk to me. But if I was some brand new dude who had done nothing and I didn't have anything to bring to the table, I didn't have anything behind my name, if she Googled me and there wasn't nothing to be found, she probably would have been like, well, look, I'll answer a couple of your questions right now, but I only got five minutes and we ain't never going to talk again. She could have just said that. But the reason she was willing to talk to me is because I had something I brought to the table. So what does that mean for you? That means, and this is all on the subject of people slash relationships, you got to put your work in right now and build your build your your foundation. So whatever you want to be about, start being about it. If you want to be a writer, you should be writing an article every day and publishing that thing on your blog, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on what's the other one? Medium, whatever. Every single day. You need to be writing every day. So when you come to somebody and they say, what do you got? You can say, yo, I, I've been blogging every day for the last two years. Or if you want to be a, a video producer, you want to be a film director, you want to be a YouTuber, you need to start making a YouTube video every day and posting it on YouTube every day and download the raw video and put it on your Facebook and put it on Instagram TV. Whatever you got, you need to be doing that every day so that when you meet somebody who's 10 levels above you and you're trying to get them to give you 15 minutes of their time and they don't need you for nothing, what are you going to say? How are you going to sell yourself to that person? If you ain't got nothing to offer them, you can't pay them because what they charge is way more than what you got. What do you have that makes you interesting to that person? Now, if you can walk up to them and say, yo, I done posted a video on YouTube every day for the last 10 years straight. They're they going to pay attention to you. They're going to at least listen to what you got to say because they're like, wow. All right, this is a person who's serious. This is a person who at least does the work. And you, you ain't even got to be known or famous or anything. 
All right, you could put out a video every day, nobody even seen it, but you put it out every day. You put out a video every day for 10 years straight, somebody gonna notice, trust me. But you gotta put that work in so that when you finally get your chance, you got something, and somebody say, well, who are you? And when somebody asks you who you are, they're not saying what's your name and where you're from and who's your family. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, what have you accomplished up to this point in your life that makes you somebody that I need to be paying attention to, that I need to talk to? Why should I give you even two minutes of my time? Like I talked about two days ago, three different types of people, two minute people, two day people, and two hour people, two minutes, two hours, two days people. Which one are you to other people? When you meet somebody who's 10 levels above you in your industry, are you a two-minute person? Are you a two-hour person? Or are you a two-days person? And it's not based on your clout or your you no know, relative fame. It's based on what have you done that makes me think you could do something to help me? What have you done that makes me think that if I give you a little bit of my time, you're going to take that information and you're going to get bigger and better. That makes me say, you know what? I need to stick with this person because they're going to become something. I'll tell y'all a story real quick. Another story. All, right, all y'all know DJ Khaled, right? Everybody knows who DJ Khaled is. And all y'all know the guy who actually put DJ Khaled on, a lot of people don't know. Like the famous person who was already famous to help DJ Khaled uh, get on was Fat Joe. His rapper named Fat Joe. Most of y'all, if y'all know DJ Khaled, you know who Fat Joe is. Now, Fat Joe is from New York. DJ Cal is actually from New Orleans, but he was, he was doing his thing in South Florida, like Miami, Orlando, whatever. And I heard Fat Joe on the radio one time. Not the radio, matter of fact. Well, it is the radio, but he was on The Breakfast Club. Y'all know The Breakfast Club. And Fat Joe said, you know, all these, because the, the host of the show was asking him, like Charlemagne and Envy was asking him, like, yo, Fat Joe, all these rappers that used to be part of your crew, they sometimes be bashing you like, yo, Joe didn't help me. Joe didn't put me on. Joe didn't help my career. Joe left me. He left me alone. He didn't help me do what I wanted to do with my music. And Fat Joe was like, listen, like people got to understand. A lot of times rappers get on and they think that the person who brought them in the game is supposed to just do everything for them. Like, yo, putting you in the game, that's the thing that I did for you. I put you in the game. I, I help people know your name. Because I put you in my video, or I let you get on one of my hit records, or I got you went and got you a deal. I put you in the game by doing that. I don't owe you nothing else. I just put you on. And this is what he said to follow it up. This is the reason why I mentioned DJ Khaled. Fat Joe said, I gave so much opportunity and did so much to help a whole bunch of those other dudes, but they didn't take the opportunity. They didn't run with it. They took it. They took whatever I did for them, and that's as far as they went. As soon as I stopped doing things for them, they stopped being good because they wasn't willing to do anything for themselves. And that's why none of them got on. And then he mentioned DJ Khaled. This is what he said. He said, I gave DJ Khaled a shot glass worth of opportunity. Y'all know what a shot glass is, right? He said, I gave DJ Khaled a shot glass worth of opportunity. And DJ Khaled took that little shot glass and he went and got the whole ocean. That's a hell of an analogy right there. And I, I talked about that on my, on my master class on my podcast once. That Fat Joe said that about DJ Khaled. And any of y'all know who DJ Khaled is. Actually, everybody listening to this knows who Khaled is. Even if you ain't a fan, you know who he is. Why do you know who he is? Because he's out there. He's always out there. And he's active. And he makes sure people know what he has going on. Even if you don't like him, you know who he is. Because he took that little tiny bit of opportunity that Fat Joe gave him. And he ex extrapolated on that opportunity and went and made his own opportunity. Now, he helps other people get on. Because he took that little bit of chance he had... And he ran with it. And it's the same thing that you need to do. Because in life, you ain't going to get a huge opportunity from everybody. People ain't going to just stop everything they're doing to help you out when you are nobody. You have achieved nothing. You ain't got nothing to offer them. Listen, why will somebody give you their time? All right, this is a serious question. This is not, listen, life ain't no charity, ladies and gentlemen. You want to build relationships? Uh, you want to have connections? You want people to uh, know who you are? You got to bring something to the table. How many times do I got to say that? I'm going to keep saying it. You got to bring something to the table. You ain't got nothing. Whatever little bit of chance you get, uh, you better do what DJ Khaled did and go get the whole ocean with a shot glass. Uh, how many different times you got to dip into the ocean with a shot glass to get the whole thing? All uh, right, you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. But that's what Fat Joe, the analogy that he made with DJ Khaled did. I'll tell you another guy, Puff Daddy. Everybody knows who Puff Daddy is. When he was trying to get on, he was trying to get a music business. DJ, I mean, Puff Daddy is from New York. He was going to school in D.C. He was going to Howard University in D.C., uh, any of y'all from that area, you know how far it is from D.C. to New York, right? You're talking two plus hours driving and even longer if you take the train or something. Puff Daddy wanted to get in the music industry. He was living in Mount Vernon and this dude named Heavy D. 
who was like one of the most famous rappers at that time. Heavy D passed away a few years ago, rest in peace. But Puff knew Heavy D lived in the neighborhood. So he went and found Heavy D. He was like, yo, put me on, give me a chance, please, please, just give me a chance, give me any kind of chance. And Heavy D, he didn't need Puff Daddy. Heavy D was the biggest dude in rap. And he said, look, I ain't gonna promise you nothing, but I'm gonna connect you with somebody and we are gonna see what you do with that connection. That's all he said. I ain't gonna promise you nothing. But I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put a call in for you because you seem like a respectable young dude and you come, you wanna come up, you look like you might be about something. I don't know, you might be. I'm gonna give you a chance. He went and got Puffy an internship. Y'all know what an internship is? That means you work, you working somewhere basically for education. You might get paid, you might not. I'm not sure he was even getting paid. I don't know if Puff Daddy was getting paid as an intern, but he was an intern, which basically means you only work here for a small period of time. When we're done with you, we can kick you out and we don't owe you nothing. Puff took that internship. Everybody knows who Puff Daddy is now, right? All right, he built all that he got now off an of internship, just off of hustling. And I remember they said Andre Harrell was the guy who was Puff Daddy's boss when he got his first job as an intern. And he said he told Puff Daddy, he gave him a tape, like not a not a string, not a link, but an actual physical tape. And he said Puff, his name wasn't even Puff then. They was just calling him Sean. That's his real name. I need you to take this tape to this office that was like 20 blocks away. All right, he was take this tape down there to this guy down there. Tell him it's from me. And Puff Daddy, said, Puff Daddy said, all right, he took the tape, left the office. Andre Harrell said, I picked up my phone because I need to get on a phone call. As soon as after I gave Puff the tape, he left. I picked up my phone because I need to get on a call that I was scheduled for. As soon as I ended my call, this dude, Puff, comes running back in the office, like huffing and puffing. He had on the tie. He had on like a cert certain tie. His tie was back behind the shoulder like this. And Andre Harrell said, well, you, why are you huffing and puffing like that? Like, what happened to the tape? And he said, Puff Daddy said to him, I already dropped it off. I ran down there and I ran back. And Andre Harrell said, when he told me that, I said, all right, this dude is going to be somebody. And we all know who Puff Daddy is to this day. I'm telling you those stories to tell you this. And I'm going to say, I told you I'm going to say, I was going to say it again. When you get a little bit of opportunity, you better be so ready and so good that you don't have to go begging for opportunity ever again. All right, Fat Joe got that opportunity, gave that opportunity to Cowett. Calvin ain't had to ask for another opportunity. He put his cell phone with that little bit. Puff Daddy got that little opportunity from Heavy D and Andre Harrell. He ain't had to ask for another opportunity. He put himself on after that. You got to be the same way. There's a lot of times, even me to this day, I mean, I'm not famous as uh, Fat Joe or Heavy D, but I still get people coming to me asking me stuff like, yo, you know, how can I, how can I get on? Can you help me get on? Can you do something for me to help my career or help my business and things like that? Like, yo. This life is not a charity. It's not a charity. All right. This is a, is a value exchange. That's what business is. You give something, you get something. But you got to bring something in order to bring something back. To get something for somebody else, you got to give them something. If you ain't got nothing, you need to work on your game and get something. You can't show up empty handed expecting to get something back. Everybody got that. Point number seven. We are talking the eight principles that you need in order that you need to add to your hard work in order to bake that cake of success. Number seven is betting on yourself with an asterisk. It's more than just betting on yourself, all right? It's more than just that. But let me lay this out. Sometimes when people become really successful, right? And they, they do something where they gotta take some kind of risk and they win. They end up succeeding, they make a lot of money, they become famous, they make it to the NBA, they start a business, they sell their company for a billion dollars. People start telling their story, right? Oh, this guy, he was sleeping in his car and he went to this tryout and he paid $100 and he didn't know how he was going to keep his cell phone on. He couldn't feed his kids. He didn't have diapers for his baby. And now he's in the NFL. He just got a $20 million contract. The key is you got to bet on yourself. This is the way people tell the story, right? Anytime somebody comes from what it seems like nothing to something, everybody wants to tell the story of how that person bet on themselves and they became successful. Uh, one of the guys that I love, one of my favorite writers, is a guy named Bill Simmons. He doesn't write anymore, but he has a podcast and he has a company called The Ringer. He was on ESPN, Bill Simmons. He got fired from ESPN, left the company, started his own company, The Ringer. And after a couple of years, The Ringer got bought by Spotify for probably a whole lot of money. And Bill Simmons made a whole lot of money in that deal. And people start telling the story. Well, see, Bill Simmons got fired from ESPN. Then he started his own company. And now look at him. He made all this money with Spotify. He bet on himself, kids. All you got to do is bet on yourself and you'll be successful in life. All right, this is not true. You heard me correctly. That's not true. Betting on yourself is not the whole story. Betting on yourself is important. It is something that you need to do, 
But if somebody just tells you you need to bet on yourself and that's how you become successful, they're lying to you. Actually, no, they're not lying to you. It's just that they don't know any better, so they're giving you half the information. I'm going to give you all the information. All right? Not only do you have to bet on yourself, you got to win the bet. Any of you ever been to a casino? Any of you ever gambled online? You ever bet on a sports game? Any of you ever did a March Madness pool? You know how they do the, the brackets for March Madness? Not this year, but every other year. All right. Any of you ever been to a casino? You know. Just because you bet doesn't mean you're going to win. So when somebody tells you that betting on yourself is one of the things you need to do to be successful, well, they only gave you half of the equation. Because I could go to Vegas right now. Well, I don't live in Vegas, but all the casinos are closed right now. But let's just say the casinos were open. If I was to go to Vegas or even here in Florida, there's a, the Hard Rock Casino right in Fort Lauderdale. I could drive up there and I could bet all the money I got on uh, Russian roulette or the blackjack table or whatever I want to bet on, right? Just because you bet does not mean you're going to win. You can lose all your money betting on yourself. And the thing is this. The only time you hear stories about people betting on themselves is when they win. See, Bill Simmons bet on himself. And he won by selling his company and making all that money. So it was a big time story. But what about the people who also got fired from ESPN? They started their own company and that company ended up failing and they ended up broken out of the game. Now, you don't hear that story, do you? But for every one Bill Simmons, there's 10 of those. But you don't hear about those people. So I'm here to make sure y'all understand. Don't just listen to the information that sounds good to you. You got to listen to all of it. When you bet on yourself, here's the rest of the sentence. You got to win the bet. This is element number seven. Bet on yourself and win. And win. Y'all got that? Whenever somebody's successful, they like to tell you the story. Well, I believed in myself. Nobody believed in me. I bet on myself. I gambled on myself. I know uh, Tobias Harris is a guy with the Sixers. He's a basketball player. He had got offered a contract for a certain amount of money. He turned it down because he thought he could get more money. Played out the last two years of his contract. Then he got a contract for like three times more money. People like, see, he bet on himself. That's why Tobias Harris succeeded. But what about the players who bet on themselves and they end up getting less money when they finally got a contract? Nobody talks about them. But they exist. For every one successful bet on yourself, there's ten failures who bet on themselves. So don't just think you betting on yourself means you're going to win. You got to win the bet. Okay? Betting, ladies and gentlemen, is not a guarantee of success. If you ever been to a casino, you know this. You ever been to a dice game? You know this. You ever bet on a sports game? You know this. Betting is not a guarantee for success. You got to make sure you win the bet. Now, here's the thing. Because right now you might be thinking, well, Dre, you're saying that you got to bet on yourself to succeed. But when you bet on yourself, you run the risk of losing, right? Every bet runs the risk of losing. And that's right. If you bet on yourself, you might lose. If you bet some money, you might lose that money. If you bet your time, you might lose your time. If you bet your your career, you might lose your career. Anything that you put on the line when you bet, you might lose it. So why would you do that? So you might be wondering, Joe, well, what am I supposed to do then? How do I mitigate the risk if there's a risk of losing every time that I bet? How can I avoid losing any time I bet? Well, I'm going to tell you. The only way you can avoid losing is to not bet. And if you don't bet, you can't win. But here's what you need to understand about betting. I'm going to tell you something that Dame Dash said. Y'all know Dame Dash, Jay-Z's old business partner from Rockefeller? He said... In life, you can never be a champion until you're in a situation where it looks like you're going to lose and you win. You heard me? You can't be a champion until it looks like you're going to lose, but you win anyway. That's what betting on yourself is about. And here's the good thing about this whole betting on yourself idea. Unlike at the crap table or the roulette wheel or the casino or playing blackjack, this kind of betting that I'm talking about, you can do everything that you want to weigh the odds in your favor. See, if you go to Vegas and you play the Russian roulette, as soon as they put that wheel on there, you can't do anything that you can't do anything to make the bet swing in your favor. Right? You put a hundred dollars on red, you can't do ain't nothing you can do to change that fifty fifty proposition. It's actually less than fifty fifty because of the zeros, right? You can't do anything. You try to do something, they're gonna kick you out of the casino and you, know, you might get beat up by security. But in life, once you make a bet on yourself. You can do whatever you want to weigh the odds in your favor. All right, so every time you bet on yourself, it's not a 50-50 proposition. If you keep working on your game, you keep building relationships, you choose wisely, you master the art of timing, you know the right people, you persist properly, you got the right vision, you can make it 99 to 1 odds that you win your bet every time that you bet. But you must place a bet. If you don't place a bet, it's impossible for you to win. It will take you too long to get there. The key is this. 
when you are in the right game, when you realize you're playing a game that you can win, you realize you're playing a game that the odds are in your favor because you've chosen wisely, that's when you got to push all your chips into the middle of the table and you got to bet big. That's the only way you'll ever take the house. Just like Danny Ocean said in Ocean's 11, when George Clooney was talking to Brad Pitt, when you get that right hand, you got to bet big, and that's when you finally take the house. But you got to be willing to bet big to take the house. You can't take the house playing, playing small money your whole life. And when I say small money, I'm talking metaphorically. I could be talking literally. Y'all understand what I'm saying. You've been listening to me. You understand what I'm saying. You got to bet big when that opportunity comes in. You got to win. Don't lose your bet. If you lose your bet, then you might not have nothing else to bet. You might have to start pawning stuff. You got to win when you bet. Point number eight. Today we are doing part two of two of the eight ingredients necessary to be successful in life to combine with your hard work. Not to replace hard work, but to combine with hard work. Number eight, insight. Insight is element number eight. Now a lot of people don't know what insight means, but I'm going to explain. I'm going to clear that up for you today. I'm going to tell you two times I asked myself a really good question. Once when I was playing ball early in my basketball days, I asked myself, hey, how can I take the two things that I love doing the most. One of them was playing ball, the other one was being on the internet. How can I combine these two and position myself to where I got some control over my career and over my destiny as opposed to when I was playing ball, I saw that, all right, nobody signs me, I don't have a job and then I can't make money and I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I'm gonna be in six months. I don't know where I'm gonna be in a month because I don't know if I'm gonna get a call or if I'm not or what I'm gonna do. It was hard to live that way because I didn't know what was gonna happen and I didn't have any control over it. I didn't like that. So I asked myself, how can I get some control? How can I combine my skills, the internet and basketball, and make something out of it? And that's when I started blogging more, writing more, built my website, put more videos on YouTube, and the rest became history. That was the first great question I asked myself, the great insightful question. How can I combine these two and make something out of it? I didn't have an answer at first, but when I thought about it, I finally figured it out. It took me some time, figured it out, and that changed a lot of things. Next time I asked myself a great question, it was a couple years after that. I had all this content on the internet that I was putting out for free, and I, had, I saw I had people who were interested in what I was doing. I said, how can I take all this free stuff that I'm putting out and figure out a way that I can use it and create some stuff that people will pay for, create some products and services that people will pay for so I can have a real business going here on the internet so then I can make enough money online that even if I don't play ball anymore, I'm good. And that was another great question. That was a great insightful question. I came up with an answer to that question. Again, it didn't just pop in my head immediately. It took me some time to think about it. I had to do some research. I had to do some learning, get some information. And when I got the right information and I figured it out, that changed everything as well. That's what made me an entrepreneur when I asked myself that question. Those two questions are insights. Here's what an insight is. Being insightful is not about having all the answers. It's not about when you have a problem, you just like this magic genius, like Aladdin, you rub the... Rub the rub the little uh, bottle and all the, rub the lamp and everything, all the answers just, uh, to light just pop out of the, the genie. No, it's not how it works. Out of the lamp, brother. Being insightful means you ask yourself the right questions and even when you don't have the answers, you allow yourself to play around with that question until you figure it out. That's what being insightful is about. It's about asking the right question and understand something. Asking the right question, one right question is worth more than 20 mediocre questions. One great question, one great question is worth more than 20, 30, 50 mediocre level questions. But you got to come up with that great question. That's the insight. That's the insight that if you can answer that question, it can change everything in your life. If you can act on that answer, it'll change everything in your life. That's what insight's about. And here's the thing about insight. You don't have to have it yourself. You don't have to be this genius who has all the insight yourself. You can get insight from somebody else. You could be listening to somebody else talk and they could say something that could spark an idea in your mind and you could take that and go do something for yourself. That's an insight. Or you could have a coach or you could be talking to one of your friends. Or you could be reading a book or watching a video or listening to somebody's audio book or download somebody's podcast and you can get an insight just from listening to somebody else. But you got to have your eyes and ears open knowing what you're looking for, knowing what you're aiming for, and that's when you can find those insights. But you gotta be looking for it. The insight's not gonna hit you upside the head. You gotta go look for it. If you're looking for it, you'll find it. But you gotta know where you're aiming. Where is your attention? Where is your focus? What's the goal? What's the outcome that you're after? What have you chosen wisely? What's the vision? When you know what those are, the insights will come to you if you're paying attention. But you gotta have those insights. The key to insight, again, is you don't have to have it yourself. Somebody else can give you the insight. 
Uh, you can get it from another person, but you got to be paying attention. Uh, you ain't going to get insight from you know, just scrolling through an Instagram feed, randomly looking at random stuff that ain't got nothing to do with your goals and your vision for your life or watching you no know, funny videos on TikTok or something like that. You got to be looking for stuff that's actually going to help you. And it's an investment that you got to make. Now, with all that being said, all of that being said, insights. And one more thing about insight. <laughs> insight is not about becoming 10 times smarter. When you get the right insight, you'll get 10 times the results of what you're getting right now. Uh, if you get the right insight right now, your results will multiply by 10. But the thing is, you don't get that because you worked 10 times harder. All right, it's impossible to work 10 times harder for most people. Uh, if you're at 75%, multiply that by 10, that's 750%. No human can do more than 100%, so it's impossible. It's not about working more hours. If you're working eight hours a day, you can't work 80 hours in a day. All right, it's impossible. Only 24 hours in a day. All right, so it's not about working harder. It's not about being smarter. It's not about uh, having more hustle or having more talent than everybody else in the world. That's, it's not about none of those things, okay? Insight is about thinking on a different level. See, the people who think, oh, I just, I'm going to just work harder, I'm going to just get smarter than everybody, they're thinking down here. People who work off insight, they think up here. And they might work less than the people down here and still get 10 times the results in it. This is how you can work less but get more results. Any of y'all who lifts weights, y'all know what people say, less is more, right? When you lift weights less often, but you do the right kind of lifts, you actually get bigger muscles and you get stronger through lifting less than if you lift more. Why? Because of insights. You got to have the right insight as to what the hell you're doing. If you lift less and you're not getting stronger and bigger, it's probably because you don't know what you're doing. You don't have the right information. You need to connect with the right people so that you can stop doing the wrong thing. Now, all that being said, now that I said all that, I'm going to recap all eight of these elements that are going to go into your, your batter so you can bake that cake of success. The oven is hard work. All right, so I'm not saying the hard work doesn't matter. Everybody got that. Make sure you don't misconstrue nothing that I'm saying. Hard work matters, but until you put the right ingredients in the oven, that oven ain't producing the cake. Y'all got me? And I'm going to tell y'all, after I recap these, how you could get this whole master class. Everything I just talked about, I recorded as a full master class. It's about 90 minutes. I'm going to tell you how you can get it for free. All right. Now, the eight elements that it takes more than hard work. Hard work ain't enough. You need more than hard work to be successful. Here are the eight elements that you must combine with hard work. Write these down so you don't forget them. Number one, choosing wisely. Number two, luck. Number three, timing. Number four, vision. Number five, persistence. Number six, people. Number seven, bet on yourself and win. Number eight, insight. Now, this whole philosophy of work on your game is all about being in a performance-based business. That's what we're in. Life is a performance-based business. If you perform, you get the business. If you don't perform, you're out of business. And it's about results. When you perform, you got to produce a result. You perform too often with no result, all right, you won't get a chance to perform no more. Are right, you on a basketball team and you ain't making no shots, you're going to be on the bench because you ain't performing. You ain't producing the result. The result is the ball is supposed to go in the hoop, right? So anybody who got a question on all this, you can go ahead and post it. I'm going to take it in a minute. So work on your game. For those of you who don't understand what the whole point of this philosophy is, I already told you it's the pro-athlete mindset applied to business, sports, and life. But what is the action? What's the actions of it? The reason why you work on your game is so that you can create opportunity for yourself. When you create opportunity for yourself, then you will position yourself to be able to perform. You create an opportunity, now you can perform. Show what you can do, right? If you're an athlete, you practice so that then you can go to tryouts, you can make the team, now you get an opportunity to get in the game. Now when you get in the game, you got to perform. And when you're on the court performing, the outcome is what? You want to win the game. That's the result. And when you produce a result, what happens? You get a reward. And when you get a reward, then what happens? Now you got to work on your game again so that you can perform again, get a result again, and get a reward again. Then you just do it over and over and over again. So it's work on your game leads to opportunity. Opportunity, you perform. You perform, you get a result. You get a result, you get a reward. That's what everybody wants in life. They want the reward. You want a reward, you got to follow those five steps. Work, opportunity, perform, result, reward. You combine these eight elements with hard work, that's how you get the success. Now, I got like 10 minutes to take questions because I didn't talk for damn near the whole hour that we get here on Instagram. I'm tell you about these two books and I'm taking questions. This one right here, The Mirror of Motivation, The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. This book I wrote so that you can look in the mirror and identify who's the person that you really need to be so you can do what you really need to do so you can live the life that you want to live, which means 
you will be personally fulfilled. You will never feel like you don't know what you're doing with your life or feel like you have no direction or feel like you, know, you don't even know what you're doing here. This book will help you look in the mirror and figure out who's the person you really need to be. Get in, back in touch with that person with your instincts so you can be the full version of you 100% of the time. Get this for free. It's already paid for. You take care of the shipping at mirrorofmotivation.com. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Get this book free. Just tell me where to ship it. This one here. The overseas Basketball Blueprint. This is for anybody who wants to play professional basketball overseas. If you want to travel the world, play basketball, see places that you otherwise never would have seen, and get paid for it. Your food's paid for, your travel is paid for, your only job, your full-time job is to come to the gym and play basketball every day. If there's a better job in the world than doing that, I don't know what it is. You want that job and do it so that you can do what 99% of athletes never do, which is get paid to play their sport. Go to balloverseas.com. I will ship you this 237-page book anywhere in the world. The book is already paid for. All you got to do is take care of the shipping. This is at balloverseas.com. We just shipped out a bunch of these books today. I just ordered a bunch of them from the printer yesterday that will be here in a week or two so that I can ship these out myself because the shipping situation right now has been way slowed down because of this whole COVID-19 because nobody's in the factory shipping books out, or at least not like they used to be. So everything's taking too long. But these are going to get to you quick. Balloverseas.com, you want to play overseas basketball. Mirrormotivation.com, you want to light that fire inside of yourself. Now, I'm going to take whatever questions we got going on in the comment section. If you got a question, go ahead and post it. We're going to get to those questions right now. I got like less than 10 minutes to answer these questions. So go ahead and post it right now. Post your questions right now. Someone said you should get a live me page. I don't even know what that is. King Ken 101, what's going on? Andy91282. From Cali, what up? Let's see, let's see. Dim Stylion, Stylion, what's going on? Calico Styles, what up? Sniper Shooter, said people spread this myth about hard work. Yeah, I mean, they're not trying to spread a myth, they just don't know any better. They can't explain it any better, so they got to. Hey there, Sandra, what's good? Chlor G1, what's going on? M Quintina32, what up? Sniper shooter, appreciate that. Let's see, let's see. I'm seeing if I got any questions here. I'm not sure we got any. Dim Sty, Stylion. So you have no idea why I'm not famous yet? Are we working on it? M. Quintina says, people who found Dre found him for a reason. That's right. And people who will find me will find me for a reason. But I'm going to find them. I got to find them. You can't hope they find you. We're going to get to that. Wireru17 said, I play ball at Karen U and PA D3. Could I talk to you? I'm talking to you right now. Brandon said, this just might be better than yesterday's. That's a fact. This is, this is the continuation of yesterday's. And oh, yeah, y'all want to get this whole master class? I'm going to tell y'all probably about tomorrow's live. I'm going live again tomorrow, same time. No later than this weekend, I'm going to tell y'all where y'all can get this whole masterclass. I went and recorded the whole thing in one piece. I'm going to tell you where you can get the whole video for free. I'm, a, I'm putting the website up right now so y'all can get it. Hey there, Sandra, I appreciate you. You just ordered the books. That's what's up. Whichever books you got, they're going to be great. I got a lot of them. So whichever ones you got, those are going to be great. Then I'm going to tell you which, which ones to get after that. Uh, let's see. James says, any way you can take care of my shipping... If I'm struggling financially, well, all you're doing is taking care of the shipping. I already paid for the book. The book costs way more than the shipping. Trust me. <laughs> How do you work on your mind? Log into these lives every day and then get the free access at Work On Your Game University down there. That's where you get access to my game group membership. You get the first two weeks free. And just get these books, actually, because this book right here, you can read this book over and over again. That's the great thing about a book. You can read it over and over again. And you'll get plenty of value. Next, The second time you read it, you'll learn things you didn't get the first time. G0 said, great talk. I appreciate it. M. Quintina, is it worth trying to walk on to a D1 after transferring? Is it worth it? I mean, I can't answer that. Only you can answer if it's worth it or not. Because you're the one who has to take the action. Hey there, Sandra says, what if you're trying to break into a new field and don't have the content you suggested? Uh, what kind of field are you talking about? If you could be more specific, I can answer you more specifically. But content is something that you create like this right here is content what i'm doing right now so when this is over i'm gonna download this video 
and eventually I'll put it up on YouTube and boom, that's content right there. Or I can get on my phone and I can get on this phone right here. I can write an article, post it on WordPress, on my word website, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. That's content. You could do a live stream right now on your IG. That's content. So content is something that you create on your own. So you can start creating content right now. Why Rue said I got invited to Hard Sports Management Camp in Vegas. Do you know if it's a good exposure camp? I got a book coming out where I'm going to be talking about that very soon. I'm hoping to have it ready soon, but I'm actually, actually, I'm waiting on a printer right now because the printer is taking long. As I told you, our printers are taking forever right now because of the whole COVID thing, because everybody's not at work. So things are taking a lot longer. Money Mace is the type of bins you got. Well, you work for the government? <laughs> uh, as far as that camp, though, uh, asking if a camp is good, I mean, is, that question is really not uh, quantifiable because the camp is really based on the players that show up. That's really the value of the camp is who shows up to the camp and then what kind of opportunity you get. And so one element is who's playing. The other element is what kind of opportunity do you actually get? And I'm going to talk specifically about camps like that in something that I got coming soon. But I'm, I got to wait on some other things that I don't control right now before I can give you more detail on that. But in this book right here, I do talk about exposure camp. So if you don't have this book, you should get this book. And who knows? Who knows if that camp is even going to take place, given the way we're looking right now in uh, sport in the sporting world. And what else I'm about to say? You would have to, when it comes to exposure camps, it's not always so uh, cut and dry. Because, again, the players change. So if all the players that come to the camp are trash, then is the camp good? And if all the players are 20 times better than one guy, does that make the camp bad? It depends. So it's several things you got to take into account. But like I said, I got something coming on that very soon, and hopefully it'll be ready within the next couple weeks. By the end of this month, I expect it to be ready. So just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Just follow me on IG. Get on my email list. Go to Ball Overseas. Get on my email list and make sure you get all the messages I send out. Tito Ball F. Dez was good. Question is, for football, I'm trying to transfer to Colorado. I'm a senior in high school as of today. James 127 was good. Jonathan says, how can someone gain more insight on their own? In quarantine, since I can't be around anyone else, how can I work in basketball more efficiently every day? Well, you can get insight by consuming material, people who are smarter than you, people who see things differently from the way you see them, people who have ideas that you don't have. So you can get that through reading books. You can do that on Amazon, iBooks, Audible, wherever you get your books. Wherever good books are sold, you can get these books right here. These will help give you some insight. This one right here. You already got that one. Get work on your game. Work on your game book.com. I'll give you some bonuses if you get it from me. Basketball, well, I mean, you can't practice basketball without a basketball court. I mean, you could dribble the ball, but you probably already know that. But if you ain't got a basketball court, you can't play basketball. Ain't no magic trick to that. Why Ruth said I'm about to get that overseas book. That's what's up. Jacob, I appreciate you. All right, I got less than two minutes now. Instagram's giving me a countdown. Hey there, Sandra says, sports media. Yeah, man, turn on your camera. Turn on the camera phone and start creating. Start blogging, vlogging, uh, articles, whatever type of media you're trying to do, start creating your own so that you have a portfolio. That's what you want to have is a portfolio so you can show people, yo, I've done something. Here's what I've done up to this point. All right, I got, I'm taking like maybe one more question, then we got to wrap it up because Instagram is about to kick me off. Can colleges or overseas roster consider game for recreational weeks? They can, but they won't. You got to get some actual game from a good games against players who can play. If you don't have that, go get it. Jonathan says, I've been gaining more insight by listening to you every day. Well, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You got six in my books. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So you understand already. Tim says, how do I separate myself in the 800 meters and there's so many other people in positions that are thriving? Well, if you're in a racing, then I guess the way you separate yourself, you got to be faster than them. I mean, as far as I understand, I'm not a racing expert, but that's what I know. <laughs> You want to separate yourself in racing, you got to be faster than everybody else. So you need to go find the people who know what's going on and get that training or get that program or whatever you got to do. Somebody says, can I email you my tape from YouTube? No, do not email me any game footage. I do not watch game footage. I'm not a scout. So you don't need to impress me. You need to impress the people who can sign you. I'm not the guy you need to impress. But I will give you the information on who to find, how to find those people. But I'm not the guy that you're trying to impress. All right, I got to wrap this up. I got 20 seconds left. Everybody, I will be going live tomorrow, 6.15 p.m. every day from now until 
As long as you, I'm on here, I'm going live every day until you hear otherwise. As long as this crisis is going on, I will be going live here on IG and on Facebook. Facebook slash work on my game, work on your game. And that's it. I can't even say nothing else because this guy's about to cut off. Everybody have a great day. Thank you for your time. I'm going live tomorrow. Be here. Turn on your notifications. Work on your game.